Hello, I'm Andrea Cabral. I'm the project management intern here at SendGen, and I'm here with Raymond Micah, one of our software engineers. And today we're going to be talking to our one of our proof of concept projects that we worked on, uh, the Smart City project that we worked with one of our SendGen members, Juniper Networks, and a Canadian SME, Inside Technologies. So the project that we worked on covers two different problems that are commonly faced in smart cities today. The first problem is that different service providers coming into any new development need to lay their own access infrastructure, which could be DSL, fiber pond, or cable. InnoCybe solution allows these service providers to share a common point-to-point -point infrastructure using virtualized network elements. The second problem commonly faced in smart cities today has to do with an end user and their services. Today's services require manual deployment and dedicated hardware, which is both complex and expensive, to do a function such as URL filtering. Juniper solution allows for these functions to be virtualized into a dynamic service chain and managed by the Contrail Service Orchestrator. Today's demonstration, we're going to be talking to the two different parts. First, we're going to talk to InnoCybe's infrastructure solution, followed by a part one demo by Raymond. Then we're going to discuss Juniper's end user solution, followed by a demo of their product. So here's the big picture of everything connected. Uh, it's a lot to take in, so I'm going to try to highlight the key points. All right, for the project, we wanted to be able to show how three different service providers could make use of a common infrastructure. So here we have the blue service provider, the red and the green smart city services. Uh, this is made possible using InnoCybe's data utility controller running a customized distribution of open daylight. So each service provider is able to instantiate their own virtual network elements inside the payload switches which allow them to isolate a slice of the network devices as well as the physical fiber links, uh, which then create the virtual data path. So in part one of the demo today, uh, Raymond is going to be showing you both the service provider view and the operator view of InnoCybe's data utility controller portal, and I'm gonna pass it off to Raymond. Thanks, Andrea. Before we get into the demo, I'm just going to talk about uh, what's actually happening in the demo between the systems. Uh, so first of all, from the portal, what's going to happen is we'll make a request uh, for a change in the virtual network elements. This request is going to be passed through an API to InnoCybe's uh, Open Daylight distribution. This Open Daylight distribution has been modified so that it is able to talk to the payload switch where it's going to create a Docker instance that is representing the service provider's virtual network element and it will encompass uh, the compute and the physical link between the payload switch and the CPE. So now we'll jump over to my computer where I'll show you the data utility controller portal. Here we have InnoCybe's login page for their data utility controller portal. To start, I'm going to log in as our first service provider, service provider one. When I log in, I will see uh, a topology map of our physical network. And over on the end, at the end point of this network, what we have, if we hover, is some information about this network element. This network element is our payload switch, and we can see some compute information um, as far as its bandwidth and memory capacity and its CPUs. What we can do as service provider one is if we right click on this element, we'll be able to create a VNE. When we click on create a VNE, what we get is a dialog box where we can select um, the type of instance, in this case we just have one, that's our demonstration instance, and we can give it an instance name, we'll call this one BNE1, and 
we'll make it a large instance. So when I cl click create, what's going to happen is those API requests are going to be sent to the data utility controller. Open Daylight is going to send a request over to our payload switch. And as you can see, we now have a Docker container running BPP that's been created and is represented on this topology map as a virtual network element. Now that we have one VNE created on service provider one, what I'm going to do is actually create a second VNE after which we will transition to the operator view where we will be able to perform operations on all service providers VNEs um, from the operator perspective. So here I've created a second VNE called VNE2 and you see that it's created now and what I will do is log out of service provider one and I'm going to log back in to the portal as operator. Now this will look pretty similar because we're looking at the same logical topology. However, at the top corner you can see that I now have a tenants uh, view and I, will, I can select here which tenants logical network I'm looking at. Right now I'm focused on service provider one, but I can switch to service provider two and we can see that I haven't created any VNEs for service provider two, so there's none there. And switching back to service provider one, these two VNEs, as the operator, I'm also able to perform actions on these VNEs. And in this case, I'm going to delete VNE2. And this is undergoing the same process where the API request is being sent to the ODL server, which is communicating with the payload switch to tell it to delete VNE2's Docker instance. After a moment, if we refresh, we'll see VNE2 has been deleted and SP1 now only has one VNE. So this is the operator view where you're able to see both service providers and their v respective VNEs and perform operations on those VNEs. And that is our demo for NSIB's data utility controller. I will pass it back to Andrea to introduce the second segment of our demo, the Juniper Contrail portion of the demo. Thank you, Raymond, for that awesome demo. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the second part, which is the end user solution and their services. Uh, the bottom half of the big picture illustrates Juniper's solution, which consists of the Contrail cloud, which virtualizes CPE functions such as URL filtering, firewall, and parental controls. Uh, and also, which is all managed by the Contrail Service Orchestrator, which has three parts. Um, the first of which, which we will be demonstrating shortly, is the CSO self-care portal, which a user can interact with online. Uh, and the other two parts, the service provider interacts with. The first is the admin portal, which controls what services a user has access to. And the second is the network service designer, which is where the service provider designs different service options. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Raymond, who is going to talk to the configuration of the second part of our demo. Thanks for the introduction, Andrea. This portion of the demo is Juniper's solution, and it has a few different moving pieces. Um, first of all, for a router, we have a VMX that's running on a super micro bare metal server. This router is acting as our uh, service control gateway, which is where the infrastructure from our previous demo is going to pass traffic through a service chain on this router using Contro Cloud. So this VMX is going to route traffic to our virtual network functions in the Contro Cloud, which are managed by the Contro Service Orchestrator. This Contro Cloud is uh, Juniper's instance of OpenStack, and it's managed through all of uh, standard OpenStack API connections uh, using the Contro Service Orchestrator. 
and I will demonstrate the self-care portal being used to create new uh, virtual network functions in the cloud and also show an end user accessing the internet by going through this VMX and these VNFs towards the internet. So here we have the login portal for the customer care uh, portal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as an EMS admin. So this is as if I was a, a network administrator for someone who's managing the networks for uh, emergency services in a smart city. When I log in, what I'm going to see is something of a logical network topology where this emergency services center has, in this case, three different network centers. One is a, a dispatch center, which has a network, and then there are two, uh, two separate networks for two stations of EMS services that are uh, spread across uh, different geological regions of this smart city. In this uh, portion of the demo, we're going to be using station two, which is uh, which uh, network we have our CPE connected to, so that we'll be able to show a client using the service that I'm about to provision to access the internet. To provision a service, all I need to do is select one of these service offerings from the bottom. In this case, I'm going to select a service offering that has UTM and NAT. And what I'm going to do is drag it over to our Station 2 link. And it will create this object, which I'll be able to configure in the GUI to set some basic configurations for this service. So I'm just going to quickly name the instances. So this, what we have is two BSRX instances that are going to be created. The first one has firewall and UTM features. I'm going to give it a host name, firewall station one. I'm going to quickly change the, uh, the loopback address. And what we're going to do is configure some very simple firewall rules where we're going to allow traffic to pass from the left to the right, which is from the client to the internet. We're going to allow anything going in that direction, and we're going to allow nothing coming back unless it's part of an established session. As far as UTM, we're going to enable a web filter, and in this case, for the example's sake, we're going to block Facebook. And we're going to apply this uh, in the same direction, so we're applying it to any traffic coming from a client towards the internet. Next, I need to configure our second VSRX in instance, which is doing NAT for us. So I'm going to give it a name for uh, a host name. I'm going to change the loopback address to be different than the other uh, VSRX's loopback address. And we're just going to set very basic NAT rules, which is to NAT any address that's going out on this link. These are the two sub subnets that we have configured behind our CPE, and we're going to allow any of them to go out and be natted uh, when they're headed towards any destination. These uh, basic configurations are what we're going to use for the demo, so I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to start the instantiation of this service by clicking Enable Service. And what this is doing is sending API requests to OpenStack, the Contrail instance that we have to both provision these services, configure the VSRX instances, and uh, make the connection between the CPE's network through the service Contrail, or the Contrail service gateway to this service chain of virtual network functions and um, configure our VMX for the required routing to make that all happen. After a couple of minutes of waiting while the instances are created and configurations are pushed to those instances, what we have on our customer care portal 
is a service that's listed as active and we can verify that this service is providing um, connection through the virtual network functions to the internet by going to a client that we have set up behind our CVE. So I'm going to switch to a different remote desktop and we'll see that I have a Windows client. This is our client that's behind our CVE. We can see that Google is functioning. We can reload the page. We can connect to Google and we have an internet connection. But if I go and try to load facebook.com, I get uh, an invalid response from Facebook. And this is because our VSRX in the service chain is providing a URL filtering function and it's blocking facebook.com. So we can see that the service that we just instantiated using the customer care portal is functioning and um, that the service has been provided to that client. Thank you, Raymond, for both of those awesome demos. Uh, thank you to Sengen's member Juniper Networks and Canadian SME Inside Technologies. Uh, if you like this demo and want to see more, feel free to follow us on Instagram at Sengen Canada, at Twitter, Sengen Canada, and if you have any questions about this demo or anything that we're doing, you can send an email to info at sengen.ca and that's sengen, C-E-N-G-N. -N. Thank you.